Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you having a great day. Um, <clears throat> didn't do my morning video this morning. I got out early this morning. I had to take care of some business and stuff, and um, just getting back here now. And you know what? There's an old saying they tell you, you know, if you don't like what I'm talking about, go pound sand. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go outside and I'm going to pound actually the soil, okay? Soil that hasn't been dug up in like forever, like never. Because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get working on, I'm going to do something constructive today. And I'm going to take out my frustrations on the Dallas Cowboys on the ground here. Because see, here's what I'm doing. We're making a brick historic walkway and i need to tell my wife that we need to get another brick made for 2024 and that 2024 is the day that i lost faith in my dallas cowboys halloween halloween 2024 is when i finally lost all faith in the dallas cowboys but i'm gonna go out here i gotta dig a six foot wide by 16 foot eight inch down about eight, eight to nine inches down section so I can fill it up with gravel and um, compact it for my walkway. I'm going to say shout out to some of you guys that have already purchased bricks that are going in there. Dallas Cowboy for Life, Larry Woods Jr. Live, laugh, and love. I'm living. <laughs> I'm laughing. And unfortunately, I love the Cowboys. I got Randy and Debbie Macy. El Paso, Texas. How about them Cowboys? How about uh, that pile of poo that we got right now? Here's another one. Love one another, Shane and Jenna. Those bricks right there, along with all the history of the Red Brick House and any other ones anybody else purchases, will be here at the Red Brick House at the entranceway here forever. Past when I'm here. And... At the rate of the way the Cowboys are raising my blood pressure, that might not be much longer. Because this just gets to be ridiculous. So, as we try to get ready to play the Atlanta Falcons, we get more talk and bullshit about everything but football. You know, we got yesterday Diggs, of course, making up with the reporter and exchanging D's nuts. We got that going on. And we've got, I saw this, shout out to, to um, Law Nation, because Law Nation posted, he, he edited it, but this was missed from the podcast of Micah Parsons, where Micah Parsons and Diggs are rating the quarterbacks. And this is where you wonder, how long is this house divided going to be able to stand? It's just getting ugly. But let's let's listen to this here. Here we go. Where would you rank him among quarterbacks right now? I would say he's definitely top 10. Higher. You think he's top five? For sure. Who else are you going to put in there? Give us your top five right now. I'm going to go him. I'm going to go Mahomes. Mar. Got to have Mar. Yeah. Lamar. Josh Allen. Jalen playing pretty good right now, too. Jared Goff is is a top five quarterback right now. <laughs> and Matthew Stafford. I, bro, I love how Matthew Stafford played a quarterback position. Every Like Sam Darnold play in the, could be in the top five conversation right yeah, now. Sam yeah, Sam Darnold looking yeah. crazy too. So it's hard. There's a lot of good I, quarterbacks right I now. Can, I can't give you a top five right now based on how everybody's performing. Yeah. Bro. It, it's just too hard. So, shout out to Law Nation on the remix on there. So, here we have it. Here, here we have it for full display and for everybody to talk about this. You know, I got a, an email, okay, because now, now the trolls are back. Dak, the turnover machine. Just a reminder, your boyfriend, Dak, got eight picks through seven games. Love to see it with all the excuses that you got for Dak. It makes... It makes everybody wonder if you was at a Diddy party with him because he got some pics of you that you don't want leaked. That's the kind of stuff that I deal with on a regular basis here. You know, it, regardless that Pat Mahomes actually has more than Dak, believe it or not, but nobody talks about that. But, 
you literally see this is where Micah Parsons um podcast now, now I'll say this saying something about like that you know Micah's podcast was what Monday it was Monday and it didn't really make that much of a splash but then somebody goes back and listens to it and they get this clip and all of a sudden here it is Thursday people are looking at it because ultimately that's what you want to get that's what you want to get in social media is to get people to watch you and see what's happening is this is what I call riding the wave. Okay. Riding the wave because now this has popped out and people are laughing about it, joking about it and everybody's clicking on it. So then everybody does a video about it and it just continues to spread kind of like, um, there's DoDash. I think there's a name DoDash. She's, um, her channel has kind of taken off. Shout out to her. Um, she's been posting videos about the YouTube monetization changing and how much money she keeps doing videos on how much money she's made and so on. And it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy because the more she puts that out there and people look to see how much they made because everybody wants to see how much money can I make on YouTube, then it grows. And so then you have riding the wave because that's a wave that's going on. You do a video and say, oh, DoDash inspired me. So here, or here's what I learned from DoDash because that's hot. And that ends up creating this wave of views and creating the whole growth in the same way. Dash of faith, his channel was shut down. We don't know why it's just, it's just lost. And I've been through a similar situation. Of course, as you know, I just got back my other channel after all these years. So this is now the wave that's going to be riding going into the weekend. Here it is Thursday. We're sitting here wondering, will Micah Parsons practice and be a factor on the field on Sunday to try and save our season? Instead of that, questions that will be asked today are, well, is there a problem between Micah Parsons and Dak Prescott? You know, is it, you know, because now, you, we've heard Micah talking before about, you know, people out there been talking about me being traded is, you know, the speculation will be is, is this how Micah Parsons is trying to break up with the Cowboys and move on and get trade force of hand traded? I don't know. Is this a case of, Hey Dak, we're going to throw you under the bus because we need some more views. I don't know. Regardless of it, it's now a social media wave that everybody's going to be surfing. And this is where, as far as a benefit for the Cowboys winning, as far as this being a benefit for the Cowboys getting a Super Bowl, I can't say that anything that's done with Micah Parsons podcast has done anything to make the Cowboys look any better. If anything, now, now it's, 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 of course, fattened up bleacher report it's fattened up you know the prospects for micah parsons i guess after he's done with football or football's done with him a, a, another career where he can be like shannon sharp or something but as far as us winning football it's got nothing to do with it in the same way jerry jones going through and, and trashing 105 through the fan or or responding to the the idea of tours being a problem and basically saying hey he was gonna sell more tours you really realize that nobody cares a rat's ass about playing football. Nobody cares. Nobody in the Dallas Cowboys cares about winning freaking football. It is Thursday. It is Thursday. We have a game on Saturday. You're a three and four team. You suck ass. You have a busted a grape. And for whatever reason, everybody wants to know who you are and pay you a boatload of money for your freaking autograph when you haven't done shit. When you haven't done shit. We are the freaking laughing stock of the NFL. We literally, with Micah Parsons, yuck it up with the enemy, the Eagles, big play slay, after we get slaughtered in a game that he can't play in because he's injured the next day. 
We literally throw our own players under the bus. And that's okay, I guess, with the owner because it brings more publicity. Now, Deron Bland has been activated, but don't necessarily look for him to play this week. The Cowboys had to activate him this week or else he had to stay on IR for the rest of the season. So let's hear what I haven't heard what the talking heads have to say. I'm sure they're laughing at us. They're getting paid because of the Dallas Cowboys. And this is where you start to wonder, you know, is the fix in that the Dallas Cowboys are the joke of the NFL so they can make more money? Because Lord knows they move the needle. Football here in the Dallas Cowboys, who have an interesting inflection for games. He has thrown two more interceptions than he has touchdowns. He has a total QBR of 45, and he's been sacked eight times in that span. So we talked earlier this morning about the lack of creativity in their offense, and we've talked about the struggles of their defense. And look, the struggles of the Cowboys this year have been well-documented, if not over-documented. <laughs> the real question is, how much of it is on Dak? He's, he's the highest-paid player in the sport. Mm. He is. Should he be expected to elevate? Of course. What is yeah. going on? What's when you, fair? When you pay that amount of money to your quarterback, you expect him to be in some capacity an eraser, and he's been a magnifying magnifier. Like that, he's magnified their issues on mm-hmm. offense huh. because of some of the poor decisions, because of giving the ball away. This football team isn't one that moments when he's taking points off the board for his own team. He's also giving the ball away when he's mm. shortened the field for his defense. And so you would hope that he would erase some of those flaws. You want Dak to take this roster and pull it up some. And what they don't show, you know, here, I, I love this. I love this. Okay. Go, trash me. I don't care. I don't care. Trash me. But what they don't show is how much pressure, how Joey Bosa is literally beating down on him, and he has to fall away from the throw to try and get the damn thing off into double coverage. And people, of course, will say, well, he's a turnover machine. Because guess what? You see how, you see how tight that coverage was on him? You see that? Ain't nobody getting open on the Dallas Cowboys. So either you throw it away and you basically go three and out every play, or you got to risk the damn biscuit and hope that your offensive line holds you serve. And it seems like at times he's kind of kept it where it is or dragged it down some. This isn't all on deck, Prescott, but he hasn't elevated the way that you would hope when you pay him that money. By the way, he gets $90 million against the cap next year. Shefty looks exasperated. Well, no, it, it, he's not going to, you know, he has not making Juan Soto money, but <laughs> there is a lot of pressure on deck here in the sense that. The run game has been atrocious. It's last in the league. As Hembo pointed out, 351 runs in the NFL this year of 15 or more yards. The Dallas Cowboys have exactly none of them so far. So when you're not getting any production from the run game that you track, and yes, Dak could and should be playing better, but that's asking an awful lot. And I know they're paying him as the highest paid guy in football. But still, there are some deficiencies around him that put a lot more totally. pressure on him. And there's plenty of quarterbacks in that 52 plus million dollars. 60, 60. And we, yes, he's at 60, but they're all in the same ballpark. And I look at it as you look across the league. Just because you pay your quarterback doesn't mean you have to subtract from the offensive side of the ball. Jalen Hurts is a top paid guy. He has weapons all around him. They paid Trevor Lawrence this offseason. They surrounded him with weapons. So we look at Dak, Dak Prescott. You look at some of the interceptions and the plays he's making, they're absolutely bad. But at the same time, yes, you have to elevate the guys around you, but they still have to ball. Dan, you said it earlier. What they're doing offensively in the pass game, they're just going in straight lines. So you pay Dak, and then you just make it harder around him, and your expectation is go be better than you were last year, and we weren't a Super Bowl team last year. Here's the reality, okay? When it comes to their offense, they're a jack of no trades, master of none. That's the difference. Like If I talk to you about the the teams offensively that are good in the NFC, Washington, no huddle, Minnesota, different formations. You know what? You know what's funny? I sat there last night. doing This, this is one of those ones. <laughs> this is one of those times that I swear that somebody is watching and getting content from me. Because... I sat here yesterday. I, this is the first time I've seen this clip. I haven't seen it. But I sat here last night doing my fireside chat, and I said, here's the problem with the Joneses is 
what we do is instead of going out and saying we need to get a linebacker when we ran out of linebackers last year, we end up saying, oh, it's okay. We'll, we'll go ahead and take a safety and make him a linebacker. And I remember using the Jesse Holly when he talked about Micah Parsons being selfish because he only wants to be an edge rusher. He doesn't want to be a linebacker too. I said, that's the Cowboys thing is they're looking for jacks of all trades and master of none. I said, in the end, what I need is I don't need an edge rusher who's playing tackle who also sometimes have to play nose. I need a run stopper. I don't need a Swiss Army knife. I don't need a jack of all trades. And here it is, Dan Orlowski, Dan Orlowski is talking about jack of all trades. Coincidence, maybe. Detroit, the first run game in play action. The Los Angeles Rams, quick passing. I, like, I know what they back a, little bit. a jack of no trades, master of none. That's the difference. Like, if I talk to you te about the, the teams offensively that are good in the NFC, Washington, no huddle, Minnesota, different formations, Detroit, diverse run game and play action, the Los Angeles Rams, quick passing. I, like, I know what they want to do yeah. offensively. Yes. Dallas isn't. If we just took, a, you know, like the three barometers of modern-day offense – and where they rank when it comes to that. Number one, you have to use motion. They're 22nd in the NFL in doing that. Number two, you got to create explosive plays. They're 25th in the NFL in doing that. You got to be good on first downs because teams are too good defensively yeah. on third down. They're 27th doing that. If you, like last week, they come out, I've talked about this. They, this is their first half, first play of the second half. They run an offense like they're just better than everybody at every level. That's that's their that, first say that again. Hold they on, run an offense again. like they're just better. You think about Seattle's defense back in the day, the Legion of Boom. They played cover three all game. Why? Because at every single level of their defense, they had better players. Exactly. All pros. The Cowboys play on offense like they have all pros at every single level. They don't have that. So See, with that being said, it's called KYP. You got to know your personnel. So if yeah. you're Mike McCarthy as a play caller, if you know you don't have bona fide guys, it's your job to not be allergic to creativity. You have to help guys get open. It's that simple in my opinion. That's your job as a play caller. Put guys in the best position to be successful. The, at the core of coaching, it's problem solving. That's the core of coaching. Be a problem solver. The problem with the Cowboys is they don't have the people to line up and just beat you. Yep. So then you have to solve that problem by personnel, formations, motions, post-snap creativity. They don't do that, but they expect the result to be that. What you guys just said is exactly the issue. They line up thinking they got CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, um, you know, Christian Derrissaw, Lane Johnson, they got dudes all across the board. Well, like, a, that's a hell of a but team. Let me, let me take you back to Green Bay, though, when Mike McCarthy was there. They, they think they have Greg Jennings, Donald Jordy Driver, Nelson. Jordy Nelson, and that's not what they have. You, you can't just say, hey, you know what, guys, go out there here one-on-one -on -one and go win. Go win. You don't have a boatload of players like that on that offense from a skill position level. Yeah, so what we're saying is their players aren't that good, and they're not being elevated either by scheme or by individual play. Correct. And the result is you have a team whose plus-minus this year is minus – 48, which puts them down there with teams like Jacksonville and New Orleans, mm -hmm. who are both two and six. That's where the Cowboys are sitting right now. There you go. It, 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 at least in the end, after they trashed Dak Prescott and put all the blame on him, they ended up finally realizing, you know what? They don't really have the players. You don't have a run over 15 yards on the season. Yeah, just blame Dak. Well, anybody who wants to um, trash me live, so to speak, um, or wants to see me digging in the dirt. You know, I used to be called pig pen because I used to have a construction site with my Tonka trucks and stuff like that and used to dig in the dirt. Funny. Here we are 50 some years later and I'm still digging in the dirt. Uh, we'll go live here in, in a few minutes while I'm digging for the pathway. And let me say thank you for anybody who has, um, purchase one of the bricks your walkway stone will be put in over the next uh, couple of weeks here permanently at the red brick house i'm mark holmes and damn i gotta get miss tracy working on a new fire the gm shirt peace out